center and Messi. Since very tiny can not penetrate the DVD, the metabolic trick of the tryptophan is reduced to DVD for the resonance of certain images. And the effective level of tryptophan can be used as the diagnostic tool for the tumor localization because of the RNA, high RNA acidic expression on the proliferating cell. When L-tryptophan penetrates DVD and enters into the brain, it is metabolized into serotonin, via serotonin metabolism pathway, and it is further metabolized by monoamine oxidase, and the metabolites are rapidly excreted from the brain. However, it is known that the alpha-methylated tryptophan penetrates DVD and enters the brain, the AMT is metabolized into serotonin, but it is, further, it is not further metabolized and it remains in the brain longer. So AMT has some advantages to image for serotonin system image. So in this study, we introduced alphametic group on effective labor to tryptophan synthesis, and we want to know, uh, investigate how the metabolism and the distribution are changing. So due to the difficulty of to uh, introduce effective into electron which compound like the tryptophan, we tried to cover medicated effective tryptophan manipulation for effective labeling. So even if it is electron which compound, iodine functionalized compound remains then react with effective labor tryptophan compound candidate and we could make a vacuum label to trichloromethyl complex compound. So we made a vacuum labeling with the method and the removed the protecting group using the actor hydrochloric acid. See, we after labeling we checked the enantiometry of those compounds because the only end the enantiomer can penetrate the DVD to prevent unnecessary negation as further we should prepare the Final product, very much very pure. So after labeling, we checked the enantiomeric uh, uh, purity, and in the chrom chromatogram of the current column, there was no arsenic salt in the in the final form. So which means both the prepared compound was very enantiomeric pure. After that, we compared the bio distribution using the bio distribution study. The, in the brain update. The initial uptake was very similar in the both compound. But after 60 minutes, the F18 CF3 L AMT showed 1.7 higher uptake compared to that of F18 CF3 L PRT. The blood concentration of the compound showed, didn't show any significant differences. However, one update, the F18 CF3 L AMT was much lower than f 18 CF3 which means it suffered lower indigo deprivation. And we performed the metabolism study using the non radioactive trichloromethyl tryptophan. The and the samples from her brain, blood, urine were analyzed by each patient. We prepared the main metabolites, non radioactive tryptophan uh, compounds. Uh, for the electron fields, they are prepared by electrophilic substitution using the Tomlin's reagent. And the case from her brain, blood, urine, were uh, compared by retention time and confirmed the compound. And at 60 minutes, 31% and 80, uh, 38% of the CF3 serotonin in the remains were uh, uh, found. And uh, we compound the uh, uh, in the brain and the blood respectively. After that, we uh, compound the metabolite peak by using the enzymet, and the CF3 serotonin peak, the mass value was up to 44, and we found the protonated mass value to 45. So we compound the compound. And in the case of the CF3 AMT, it was very stable in vivo and it did not show any uh, metabolite in the brain and blood and it was used uh, somehow different with the uh, non-necrosis. 
We also thought the uh, evaluate the two of two ideas of even for space to send us a deliver the mic and do it the twenty two I really want to deliver the mic which is the three seven eight positive mics. The advantage of three and three can uh, localize two of them in and the uptake value was much higher than the children mentioned. Uh, however, the CC3 general mind, which is the best in healthy, it cannot distinguish the tumor uh, from the downloading area. So, this is the conclusion. So, we confirm the distribution and metabolism of FHCF3 and FHCF3 and the fact that alcohol inclusion can increase the brain resilience time and reduce metabolism and inhibit the glucose. So we expect that this uh, FHC3 and AMT is expected to be used as the therapeutic system in user. We also plan to study using the FHC3 and PRP and the FHC3 AMT for the tumor localization. Thanks to my members and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any question? to be presented. I have a question. <coughs> there is, uh, as we know, there is a limited use of uh, serotonin uh, synthesis inhibitor for preventing diarrhea in patients with neuroendocrine tumors. It is named Tiriostat. I don't know if you have heard of that. Is that approved in Korea? Because it would be very interesting to look for selection of these patients for therapy is quite an expensive trial, okay? uh, which uh, in Europe costs more than 2,000 euro per month. It would be very interesting to use your approach to select those patients for therapy. Okay, we can. Yeah. Other question? Okay, let me move to next. Thank you, Dr. Lee. The next speaker is Daniel Lee from the University of Iowa. His title is Enhancing SSTR2 targeted alpha particle therapy for neuroendocrine tumors with the neurons and the HDAP individuals. Please. Thank you so much for the very interesting um, I'm curious to have an opportunity to present my work uh, here at the Veterans World Congress Committee, especially in uh, my country. Um, in our lab at the University of uh, Iowa, we are working on um, some other steps in the sector, so that two or SSTR2 targeted microbiome therapy uh, for urine and tumors um, with the uh, level three that we got on the and our previous uh, lab of Burato um, therapy study demonstrated that um, one twenty micro degree of um, level of Burato is effective in long run temporary human tumor uh, simulated model. However, the same injection activity uh, uh, induced significant random toxicity after uh, six months of level of Burato injection. So what we have learned here is um, the precise dosimetry is very important uh, to determine the safe condition level of um, activity and also approaches to enhance the therapy index of the therapeutic therapy um, can be advantageous. So um, we are actually um, um, in this context we are actually um, combine PRT with the drugs that have potential to enhance the inactivity of the therapy. Avermus is an effective drug for the treatment of neuroendocrine tumors by targeting um, PR3K AT endo pathway. However, the combined effect of Avermus with PRK is not fully really understood. Um, on the other hand, histone diacetylate inhibitors or ACE inhibitors have the potential to um, upregulate SS32 expression by FGNA modification. Therefore, combining PRP with um, ACE inhibitors can be a promising approach. 
So our study started from uh, quantitative real-time PCR work in Bonn, uh, UN tumor cells. And uh, we observed a single treatment of epidermis and sodium propionate for PDA, which is an HK inhibitor, um, upregulated SSTR2 expression by messenger RNA. And when combined with two drugs, there was significant um, increase compared to uh, single treatment alone. And these findings in line with um, iodine multi iodine um, 12 functional multi assay. Um, where the uptake of radiopeptide increases function of the treatment time. And again, when combined with these two drugs, there was a significant increase in the uptake of radiopeptide um, compared to the treatment time. And we also conducted an immune study. Um, these images are um, lateral 3 Lorato uh, spec CD images uh, in bomb on tumor level mice after. Early treatment of epidermis and brain staph, which is um, um, more established form of HK inhibitors and orally available um, in single treatment or as in combination. And we observed uh, the, the single treatment of the drug did not increase the uptake of the radiopeptide in this model. However, the combination of epidermis and brain staph uh, significantly increased the uptake of uh, radiopeptide. So uh, we actually need to um, optimize those in uh, time parameters. Um, however, this imaging data suggests that um, uh, bigger combination of the environment and uh, HK inhibitor um, can help regulate the system expression um, uh, in the So uh, we are originally interested in um, the long-term effect of environment on SS32 expression. So we have developed um, a very much the gap is that model in 8727 from the human uh, cell. So by the um, PCR work and um, um, with the continuous uh, tra treatment of a very much, uh, we observed the SSTR2 expression was maximized um, uh, within two weeks. However, the expression level was a significant decrease after about you know, six weeks of a very much and we also further interested in um, if um, Everest and PDA uh, as a combination can still induce the SSTR2 population. So we did another PCR study. The cell that had been treated for more than um, 28 weeks were given a drug holiday or um, treated either Everest or PDA alone or treated with uh, PDA in combination with uh, Everest. And interestingly, we found that uh, one week drug quality uh, significantly decreased the receptor expression. However, PBA and more ideally PBA in combination with Everest significantly increased the uh, receptor expression in um, Everest adaptive cell model. So, in conclusion, the accuracy of the Acapiter PRT uh, can be enhanced by combination of Everest and is a fever by SSTR2 upregulation and also potentially uh, the tumor effect. And long term treatment of environments might not be uh, beneficial to uh, subsequent uh, PRT due to decreased SSTR2 expression. However, the expression can be restored by uh, co treatment of environments and in state inhibitors. Um, I'm, in, I'm very thankful to our land members and uh, my mentor, Dr. Nagashiro for this great uh, uh, mentorship for me. And also, um, Dr. Rodrigo and Dr. Liu for their support of the IOT. And this study was supported by uh, US uh, NIH and CIA human tumor support. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Any questions for the floor? I have a question. Uh, do you know the data from Marion de Jong and, and Rotterdam group on Everolimus in combination with uh, lutetium donatate? Yeah, you remember that there's a one paper they published uh, about two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. They have seen very, very severe increased toxicity when you're using a combination of Everolimus and uh, PRT. And that's also our clinical experience. Okay. 
So we always stop everyone was uh, before giving PRT. And uh, I, I do not have the impression that Everlimus is really increasing uh, SSDR expression. What would be the mechanism? Do you know something about the mechanism, how it increases SSDR? But I want to clarify about the trial. Did you stop the Everlimus before the PRT? Yes. But I mean, we image uh, hundreds of patients under Everlimus with gallium, Dodatoc or Dodatate. And I do not have the impression, I mean we have no systematic study, but I do not have the impression that it upregulates SSTR expression in a clinically meaningful sense. Right? I mean you have a factor of 400 or something, right? Yes. Uh, or 400 percent increase. I mean that's, that's, you would see clinically, but we haven't seen that. Um, actually, yeah, that's, that's the point, and I think that is the thing that we need to uh, elucidate um, within um, one year um, or before I leave, you know, of that. But um, actually, we did um, in the, uh, at the University of Iowa, um, the research group actually did a quick trial to the damages of what I call in combination with the um, brand set. Um, uh, yeah, I think that that's that, that, that second. Yeah, um, piece, but actually we, we don't know the mechanism of access to the expression. That's what I want to Yeah, but yeah, then we need to take this way. Yeah. Other cases from floor? So I haven't guessed it. Uh, I'm just curious about that. Uh, you just uh, tested it, uh, the PCR and you checked that uh, whether the messenger RNA on it. Uh, yes. We know that the, the messenger RNA is not good enough to prove of the what pro protein might be there. So one additional thing we need to think about is that the S SDR should go to the membrane. So many, so many processes uh, should be there between the NR expression level and the anar flow of the more expression of the SSDR to form the membrane of the cancer. So yes. I would like to suggest to you to perform the protein lead and uh, in the cytochemistry and then you have to visualize that the SDF is going to express more on the membrane by the your drug application. Yes, uh, actually uh, our study started from actually looking at the cell surface membrane protein by the drug cytomic analysis and we observed the increase of the uh, SSTRT expression and also um, probably, you know, I don't know if it's best, but there was a I don't want to apply liver top optic acid that should be related to the protein expression flow. That is actually, um, we only look, look, look at the functional level um, as a spirit expression, and we observe the significant increase that we have to have a really peptide with uh, treatment of evidence um, and um, PDA, which is an acid liver, and then combined with there's a little increase. So we think that um, protein level also um, increased. Uh, and actually, we might to try more um, uh, protein level um, assay to, to find what is the best time and what is the best protein to prevent. So that should be uh, included also. Okay, thank you for the detailed uh, explanation for that. So then we move to the next topic. Thank you, Dr. Bama. Okay, I will uh, announce uh, one of my co workers, uh, Dr. Dirk Müller from our uh, hospital, who will uh, present on targeted alpha particle therapeutics, adaption of clinical routinely produced actinium 225 table trade Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me and um, this, uh, I'm happy to talk to you about targeted uh, um, alpha particle therapeutics. So, um, the interest in targeted tumor therapy is a hypothesis that's grown rapidly um, uh, in the last years. Alpha inhibitors um, such as um, this group 230 and that 12 with a half life of uh, in the range of hours, and actinium, uh, but also new eggs like actinium uh, 225. Uh, volume 227 
are under investigation. Because of its um, complex kinetics in alpha um, Martinian 225 is a suitable candidate for those are candidates and um, for the units like uh, or such as for the talk for PCA 6070. So we will present our efforts in assessing um, the very pharmaceutical production and quality control of the 225 radio pharmaceuticals. So the lady was carried out uh, our class A conditions and tested as shielded dogs using a standard uh, labeling procedure with 20 micrograms of the corresponding pre-trials of pro media program of Actinium 225. So the challenge um, the challenge of the radio pharmaceutical production is the quality control and the continued validation of the um, quality control methods. In the first step, actinium uh, decays to a transient 221, which subsequently decays under gamma emission of uh, energy of uh, 218 kV with a half life of around 5 minutes. Um, so, therefore, the radio HPLC equipped with a, a gamma detector of the lights. Um, Immediate negative results uh, due to the selective detonation of unarmed transom 221, which does not correspond to the ratio between uh, bound and unarmed uh, actinium 225. Another method uh, for the quality control is the thin layer of hemoglobin. Um, a method is described in the future. Um, but this procedure needs more than one hour and um, determines, uh, determines uh, the amount and of unbound and bound material by the measurement uh, of the new formed Francium 221 um, at the start and front of the TSD. As shown in figure of three, the sensitivity of the radio TLC scanner for pet radio pharmaceuticals is too low to quantify the amount um, of free of uh, unbound and bound actinium 225. The X ray imaging of the TSC strips also provides only quantitatively results as shown in figure uh, 4. So a quantity Determination of the ratio between bound and unbound actinium 225 was possible by using a liquid uh, simulation counter and a selective measurement of the alpha decays um, at the start and front um, of the TSC strip. In this method, the upper and the lower part of the TSC strip was added to a liquid simulation cocktail and um, each part of the strip were measured uh, at the start and the front were measured separately. <coughs> so this method provides results for the quality control immediately after the development of the TSC strip without the need for the one hour storage time um, of the developed TSC. Typical results of um, the labeling uh, reaction are shown in uh, table 1. So, in conclusion, uh, the presented quality control method is suitable for rapid and easy determination of the amount of unbound and bound actinium 225 by thin layer of hemography. With that, I will thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? This is not the case. Thank you very much. Uh, we go on to the next uh, presentation, which uh,
comes again from our hospital. Uh, and I'm very happy to announce uh, Dr. Chi Chi Tsang. She will speak about the first new study of the novel Somatostatin Receptor and Agonist Gatam 68 Nodaga AN3 for molecular imaging of paragraphioma patients. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in the talk of today's uh, first day, we will study of the novel Somatostatin Receptor and Agonist Gatam 68 not down to be for methylation of organ normal patients. Uh, this is my disclosures. For the past few decades, uh, SAT, I have been still working established for the methylation of SDR expression tumors. And over the last decades, uh, what is more that uh, a very convincing body of evidence has been constituted that is showing the superiority of the uh, SATR antagonist over the agonist. And the antagonist having more than size uh, tumor cells are defined to use most receptor independent of the activation site. Um, despite the fact that the uh, somatostatin antagonist did not readily internalize the, to the tumor cells, uh, the antagonist has had the higher tumor uptake, um, which can now be confirmed on several occasions in visual, in vivo, and also with clinical evidence, as shown by the group of Professor Weird. Um, it's uh, longer tumor retention time. Um, which becomes very important concerning tumor adults uh, and their PRT. And also, not only related to, to uh, neuroendocrine tumor, but also in national uh, breast cancer and, and tumor in the cancer cell. And this is the first day you the study using uh, SATR and technist at uh, Somastic Center uh, by Becca in 2009. And showing the uh, much higher uh, diagnostic sensitivity. And so, uh, our recent publication as a uh, prospective study uh, confirms the large numbers of the degradation detection by the antagonist. And also, uh, the same cohort uh, shows uh, excellent imaging contrast at one hour. And uh, our recent publication in Delta J11 demonstrated regular tumor uptake in high tumor to background ratio and just to be time compare uh, favorable with uh, Tate and TOC. And our this study aims to uh, analyze the safety and benefits reversion of the antagonist uh, getting monocal M3 and the CD in very environment patients. And the peptide was provided by Professor Michael. And so, radio labeling was performed at our GMP uh, radio pharmacy from February 2017 to February 2019. Um, uh, Given an X ray PCT had uh, been performed uh, in um, more than 100 patients and uh, it was uh, 137 PCT studies with uh, a wide range of tumors. And uh, 10 part of the patients were reported, and the mean activity was 285 megapack and at um, uh, 15 minutes post injection. And the top top PCT had been performed before and or after L3 PCT um, for head to head comparison, and we also we used. Uh, quantitative assessment as well as uh, quantitative assessment. Um, the administration of Gilead-Nagaga X3 was well tolerated in all the patients. No adverse symptoms or effects were noticed in any of the patients. And the uh, comparative physiological uptake of the M3 to talk uh, in the liver, spleen, kidney, and bone marrow were. Uh, 5 versus 9 and 20 versus 31, 12 versus 10 and 1.1 uh, 1 versus 0 0.98 respectively. As it shown, uh, in most of the non organs with lower uptake of L3 uh, expects the kidneys and also the bone marrow uh, comparable but uh, in, uh, slightly higher in L3. So for the tumor, 
and the Guinea and Abbas Wake Pen City show how to find this in 100% patients with the SUV max of 2.5 to 299. And as Wake Pen City demonstrates excellent image quality with high specific uptake. Uh, compared with talk, and Wake Pen City detected many more to Malaysians. And with the, um, the novel tissue as background, a three associated TBR or TL to liver uh, 15.7, and TL to kidney 6.8, and TL to spleen 5.5, and 5.4, respectively. And uh, this is for uh, young patients with uh, paracanthoma. And um, it's uh, the general higher tumor uh, to background ratio of the um, three pet CT allowed a detection of more than 140 uh, bone metastases among the uh, agonist talk pet CT. And this is another uh, patient with a comparison of uh, uh, M3 with uh, FDG. And this patient with uh, a higher um, proliferation rate, uh, um, JPS7, and uh, most of the uh, but not all of the uh, tumor and um, SSTR uh, expression tumor lesions uh, were FDG added. And uh, this is uh, another uh, um, partner from patients um, with a direct comparison um, um, between uh, TOC and LM3. And in these patients, the higher tumor to background, so uh, of the technolation versus normal liver uh, tissue uh, and M3 and CT uh, allow detection of additional liver test disease as shown uh, is uh, three extra liver test disease detected by the uh, M3 and CT. Uh, in conclusion, this first even study demonstrated safety and very high diagnostic visibility of the new um, SATR techniques to get a screen for a machine and provides a very good rule of that distribution were superior to the agonist in detecting tumor lesions, especially in the liver. Despite the limited numbers of patients for direct comparison with talk, and we detected more uh, SATR expression lesions, which adheres to the recently reported rate loss, comparing with label SATR techniques with agonist. This result emphasize the great potential of uh, STR techniques to get up M3 for diagnosis and for guiding STR type of therapy for the diagnostic of uh, paracanthoma patients. Yes, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any comments or questions from the floor? Please. So we can Can you speak a little bit louder, please? Sure. Thank you very much for the presentation. How long the time patients with this was any of them carrying out no headline primary? Because technically, headline versus abdominal primaries act or they both make from different cells. Were they all or were they able to identify the primary in paracanons and be new tests on any headline primary? Or is it for the patients with paranormal patients? Yes, uh, yeah, uh, yes, all uh, the patients and most of uh, 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 the, the paranormal patients and also the patients with uh, um, um, more um, um, severe um, cytoma as well, it also is uh, PDGRS. I actually didn't understand your question. Uh, you were not loud enough for my own ears. The program has remained from the headlamp primaries versus alcohol, elsewhere in bar. They are probably different, or they from different cells, and they do are not. So the cases you've shown, I'm assuming, mostly for paragraphs or abnormal retrofusion of primary. Did you have a chance to test uh, your yes, on any cases of hepatic primary, like scalps, 
You mean globus tumors? Yeah, it's the same tumor entity. It's also paraganglioma. We now know that. Globus tumor, pheochromocytoma, paraganglioma is one syndrome. It's one gene which causes the disease. You know, if you, if you look at the old books and probably you are referring to this uh, different diseases, it's not true. It's one disease caused by one genetic disorder, just with different, you know, a presentation. But clonus tumors are the, the most highly expressing antagonists we have ever seen. We have seen the number 299 SUV, which was in a clonus tumor patient. Okay? So they are very, very strongly positive. And I think they are ideal for treatment. And we have treated uh, these patients uh, with lutetium, uh, LM3, and we are probably going to use intra-arterial actinium treatment for these tumors because they are extremely radio-resistant. I mean, we have seen patients after external beam radiation therapy of 72 gram, nothing happens. You can irradiate and irritate, nothing happens. It's just a waste of time and uh, you shouldn't do that. So external beam radiation therapy is not, you know, uh, suitable for treatment of these tumors. But I think probably by intra-arterial actinium, um, you know, and agonist treatment, we will be able probably to even cure some of these patients. Uh, one question. So, presenter. Um, so, you believe that uh, the radio waves, the, the, the antagonist issues better with their, than the agonist. So my question is that, that uh, your radio wave the antagonist doesn't have any disadvantage compared to wave the agonist. Always good. Well, there's, there's one disadvantage, uh, not for imaging but for therapy, which has, uh, I think, first been published by the Memorials on Catherine using JR11, so that in some cases you see very severe uh, bone marrow toxicity. Wow. Not in all, but uh, I, I think the assumption is, it's not proven, but the assumption is that this binding to stem cells. And uh, after treatment, and also we have seen in some cases with LM3, grade 3 and grade 4 thrombotidopenia, right, which I think is uh, related to uh, it's a specific activity of the compound. So, uh, because the number of stem cells, of course, is small. If you look at imaging, you see very, very faint uptake in the bone marrow. Okay, so our idea was uh, that we are using less specific activity, that means more cold peptide. Okay, so uh, usually we are using about one gigabacterial per um, uh, microgram. Uh, of peptide, uh, per 20 microgram of peptide, and uh, we have now increased DIAC, what, what is the number? DIAC to 100 microgram or 1 gigabacterial per 100? Okay, yeah, but significantly doubled. <coughs> and since then we haven't seen that. So it might be possible that you can saturate some of the uptake on stem cells. But it's, it's a theory, nobody has really proven it. Uh, but this is a possible disadvantage if you ask. By imaging, no disadvantage at all. Uh, basically, your new radio wave pro, pro it has better high fidelity to the, the your target, so you can reduce total use. So maybe you can, you know, yeah. uh, reduce the bone marrow side effect. I mean, the clear uh, advantage of the antagonists in our experience, and you see we have now uh, nearly 150 studies, is really the liver. Okay, you have very low uh, uptake in normal liver, so you have very high target non target ratios, you can see smaller lesions. And the second advantage is that in some cases, Dolatop or Dolatate is really negative or only very faintly positive. If you do the antagonist, wow, you have a very dramatic uptake 
Okay, so it opens uh, for for these patients a new, uh, you know, opportunity for treatment. Great, what a good result. So um, the last paper actually is the chemokine receptor CXCR4 target intensity with scanm 68 pentixa 4 shows superiority to FTG in evaluation of multiple myeloma. And uh, this comes from the Peking Union Medical College in China and the presenter is Dr. Yapin Luo. I hope I spoke correctly. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my study is about the uh, chemokine receptor cell support targeted capacity in microbiome. Uh, microbiome is a new plastic proliferation for uh, plasma cells in bone marrow producing monoclonal uh, immunoglobulin. Uh, FDG PSDD has an uh, impact in the workup of uh, microbiome. It can distinguish the metabolic, uh, metabolically active and inactive disease and also has a high negative uh, prognostic value of the uh, extra metabolic disease and the presence of more than three populations at baseline evaluation uh, in the overall survival and um, progression free survival in the microbiome. Uh, however, it has a low sensitivity in diffuse bone marrow pattern or low density fragmentation infiltration. According to some reports, it may, be, uh, it may uh, miss about 14 to 25 percent of the disease compared to MRI. And also, it may be uh, false positive in FDG uptake uh, in the presence of fractures, inflammation, or uh, use of, uh, use of uh, growth factors or chemotherapy. And the government has a a novel PET tracer introduced uh, recently uh, in myeloma. Several studies have shown uh, promising results uh, of this tracer in the evaluation of myeloma and also with lutetium um, based uh, radiation <coughs> therapy in myeloma. So the objective of our study is to uh, first evaluate the uh, diagnostic performance of government support uh, in myeloma uh, with FDG. And then we evaluate the, uh, its capability of, uh, uh, to measure the tumor pattern in PET scans. We analyze the quantitative uh, imaging parameters that we get uh, from the uh, government central PET CT and FDG PET CT in correlation with the clinical, uh, the clinical uh, characteristics and laboratory results. Um, we have recruited 22 patients with multiple myeloma. Uh, 90 patients have newly diagnosed with myeloma and three uh, patients have left disease. Uh, six patients have IgG type uh, myeloma, five uh, were IgA, and the other patients were uh, left chain disease. And according to the international staging system, uh, four patients have stage one disease, two, uh, uh, five patients have stage two disease, and 12 patients have stage three disease. And uh, levels of M protein, beta 2 MG, and serum for the white chain were listed here. And many patients have uh, uh, underwent both um, government central and FDG capacity, but three patients uh, do not have FDG capacity. In visual analysis, uh, we define the positive uh, PET scan as the presence of uh, focal bone marrow regions, uh, which was not caused by uh, fractures, and uh, uh, presence of extramural disease or the diffuse bone marrow pattern if the uptake in PET is uh, higher than the level. Um, in quantitative analysis, we measure, uh, we use a mean growth station to measure the total bone marrow uptake in government central PET and the total bone marrow glycolysis in FDG PET. And also, we measure the total bone marrow volume. Um, this slide is to show how we uh, measure the total bone marrow volume and the total bone marrow uptake uh, in the PET scan. In visual comparison of the PET CTs, um, 30 patients have diffuse bone marrow pattern of, my, of uh, microbiome, and 9 patients have focal, lesion, focal bone marrow lesions, and 2 patients have extramodular disease, 4 have paramodular disease. And 14 patients have white bone lesions and 9 patients have fractures. In government sample, um, 17 patients were positive, but had positive uh, PET scans. But in FEG, only 9 patients were uh, defined as uh, positive. 
And in comparison of Delhi uh, Pentacle and FDG uh, Pass CD, um, we find in temperatures, Delhi Pentacle were less superior uh, in FDG in vaccine evaluation of the disease. Uh, and in two patients, FDG was superior, and in seven patients, both of the Pass CD scans were comparable. And these are uh, four examples uh, of the comparison of gamma pentacephal and to IBG. And in these patients, uh, both of the PET scans were defined as being positive, but obviously we find uh, the uptake in gamma pentacephal PET was uh, much higher than the IBG PET. And similarly, in these patients with multiple myeloma, uh, the disease is a diffuse, uh, is a diffuse bone marrow pattern, and the uptake in gamma pentacephal uh, was much, much higher than the FDG and the FDG was false positive or uh, false, false negative. Uh, and in this patient with relapsed uh, multiple myeloma, and this patient also had uh, involvement in external bowel disease, including the nasal cavity and the right kidney. FDG was superior to Gallimax as well. Uh, FDG had detected more uh, lesions with higher uptake. And in this patient, uh, both of the uh, the PET scans were comparable. And in quantitative analysis, first we, um, evaluate, uh, we, we compare the total bone marrow volume that we measured in Gallimax Nebula and FG PET CT. And we find that there was no significant difference of the uh, total bone marrow volume uh, that we obtained in both PET CT scans. Uh, and then we analyze the correlations of the uh, quantitative parameters that we obtain in Gallium Pencil PET and FDG PET uh, with the clinical characteristics, including disease duration, serum, uh, energy, and protein, serum free light chain, 24 hour light chain, uh, bone marrow plasma site, and um, international staging system. And finally, we found there is a significant correlation, a uh, positive correlation with the total bone marrow uptake and SUV mean of the bone marrow in gallium pentacle PET with the beta 2 mg and C1 free light chain, which are uh, important uh, biomarkers in evaluation of the tumor burden in multiple myeloma. But in FEG, we haven't found any correlation with the, uh, uh, of the quantitative parameters in PET with the laboratory results, except uh, the, uh, the SV max of the bone marrow was significantly correlated with the disease duration. And these three patients uh, who, uh, who uh, have different levels of beta uh, 2 mg and serum free light chain, and also have uh, different levels of government um, uh, type in the bone marrow. So in conclusion, uh, first, uh, gamma cancer FSE showed higher positive rates than FG in multiple myeloma in this group of patients. And then we find a positive correlation of uh, total bone marrow uptake in uh, NSV mean of the bone marrow in gamma cancer capacity with uh, serum beta 2 mg and serum mm, free light chain, suggesting that it might be a promising biomarker in future studies of multiple uh, myeloma. And finally, I want to thank uh, all the oncologists uh, uh, who participate in this study in our hospital and also the financial support from the uh, National Science Foundation of China. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Lu, for this very nice presentation. Are there any comments or questions? You had the chance to start treatment uh, already of these patients? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There had been very promising results uh, from Würzburg in Germany, mm -hmm. especially for plasma sartoma treatment using the tissue and the 90 uh, peptic satire. And I think it's a, it's a very promising uh, serenostic agent. Mm -hmm especially for this uh, disease as well. Okay, if there are no comments or questions, thank you very much again. And I conclude the session uh, very much on time. So uh, 
we will go forward with the daily program. Thank you.